Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Brunswick's Best, where Lance takes a look at the best players in Minnesota Vikings history. This week, spotlighting the number 19. Uh, probably not another huge list as we've seen throughout the teens, but we got some pretty good players that uh, I'm sure you're going to tell us all about. So why don't you roll right into that list? Once again, before I get started here, don't forget to Check us out on Friday night where we're going to be doing the pregame and uh, predictions for the upcoming season. So with that being said, we'll flow right into Brunswick's best. And the first name on this list is none other than quarterback and punter, Bob Lee. Now, Bob had two stints with the Vikings, both of which saw him wear the number 19, a, seventh, a 17th round pick. Yes, 17th round. In 1968, he was the team's backup quarterback during that stretch and was also the team's punter in both 1969 and 1971. In 1971, he even led the NFL in punting yardage. He punted in Super Bowl IV and threw a touchdown pass in Super Bowl XI. He spent two seasons with the Atlanta Falcons in 1973 and 1974 before coming back to the Purple and Gold for four more seasons before finishing his career with the Los Angeles Rams. While with the Vikings, he made 11 starts, going 9-2 and two in those games, throwing for 2,153 yards to go along with 15 touchdowns to 17 interceptions, which were decent numbers in that era. Also, for a guy that mostly sat on the bench while taking on punting duties as well. And for that, Bob Lee... You made the list this week. Moving right along. Now, we all know this player's story. Um, we all know Thielen's story. He grew up in Detroit Lakes and played his college ball at Minnesota State University in Mankato. The Vikings signed him to the practice squad in 2014, and he battled his way up from the practice squad into a role on special teams. And finally, a spot in the wide receiver rotation. Thielen made a lot of plays during his time with the purple and gold from blocking a punt and running it in for a touchdown on special teams to making spectacular catches on third down to keep drives alive. Being a legitimate red zone threat, just overall always making clutch catches at crucial spots in the game. In Thielen's nine seasons with the team, he was able to accumulate 534 receptions third most behind Moss and Carter for 600 for 6682 yards the fourth most in team history and 55 touchdowns also the third most he was a fan favorite and always gave 100% effort it was never and his effort was never questioned he was a great role model for all the kids and made time for the community and for that Adam Thielen, you made the list. That is the main list. I do have one honorable mention. And a lot of you fans going back to the mid-2000s, the mid uh, probably know who this guy is. Um, Mr. Bobby Wade. Now, Bobby Wade came to the Vikings from the Chicago Bears in 2007 when the team was in legit wide receiver purgatory. Wade ended up leading the team in receiving that year, hauling in 54 receptions for 647 yards and three TDs. He was second on the team in receiving yardage in 2008, hauling in 54 passes for 645 yards and two TDs. And that, well, that sort of says something about how effective the Vikings passing game was in those two seasons. Wade played for one season after leaving Minnesota, landing with the Kansas City Chiefs before hanging them up the following year. Bobby Wade, you get an honorable mention this week. And that concludes this week's Rugwick's Best. All righty. A little short but sweet list this week, but, uh, you know, as we've said in the, in the teens and stuff, there's not a whole ton of players to uh, take a look at. Look at. We start rolling into the 20s. We're going to get a few more guys on the, on these lists, I'm thinking. So uh, make sure you stay tuned as those come forward. Uh, with that, 
I want to thank everybody for watching. Big reminder for Friday's show, we will have a preview of the season opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we're toying with a little bit of uh, format changes from uh, seasons past, so uh, you'll see a few different things here and there along the way with that. Uh, also have a special guest joining us on Friday, so uh, getting another perspective on the uh, on the team and kind of prediction-wise from other things as well. Uh, one of the OGs of Vikings Uncensored fan base, uh, great guy, great friend, friend of the show, great friend in general. Stay so tuned. Bring a little bit more spice to the show for for popping have, here and there. He'll have some smoke and takes here and there. Um, so. Uh, Make sure you check it, check that out on Friday. Uh, again, next week, full slate of shows, Rhino's Rants on Monday, where I will uh, do a, mainly focus on the recap of the Tampa Bay game, Brunswick's Best on Wednesday, and then, of course, next Friday. Uh, right now, our plan is to go live next Friday as a post-game slash wrap-up for the Thursday night matchup against Philadelphia, so stay tuned for that as well. We'll have more details next week. With that, if you have not done so, hit that subscribe button, hit the like, hit the bell so you don't miss any episodes. And uh, you guys have a re good rest of your week. We will see you Friday. Let's go. field goal range. Cousins forgetting about the field goal. Thielen one-armed. Able to bring it down for the touchdown. Adam Thielen. It's a great one-handed catch. I mean, that right there catch. is about third and goal. Ninth play of the drive. Cousins to the end zone. There is a flag. Did he get his beat? Catch was made by Thielen. It's ruled a touchdown. Wow, one hand.